Hey everyone, today we're going to swatch some Aquarius paints. Future editing Irit here. I just wanted to stop here and let you know that at the moment of filming this video, Jackson's is having a watercolor sale, including some Aquarius sets. And I just have to say, if you're interested in these paints, and I've talked about them many times in the past, I highly recommend checking them out now because you get, even without the discount, Aquarius is great value for money. And with a discount, you can get, for example, a 24 full pan set for like less than $90, which is a really great deal. So I just wanted to let you know, I will leave all the links below. And if you're interested, go check it out. Let's continue with today's video. Now, these were very kindly sent to me by the company from Poland. And I am always grateful to be sent products to try and review. And they also sent me these brushes, which are synthetic squirrel. And we have the medium size and then the extra, extra, extra large size. And the number on the brush says 113. And it's a quill brush, which I love. It looks great and it usually holds a lot of water and very enjoyable to paint. So I have here 11 paints and then I have this set. So I wanna open it with you together. I haven't tried them, I waited to film this so we can take a look together. And already I'm happy because it's a metal tin and you know I like metal tins. And inside, we have a swatch card, which is much appreciated, a great idea, and you know, it's just a really handy, visually appealing way to see how your colors actually look, because watercolors, if you're new to the medium, they look very different in the pan than they actually uh, work. So we're going to swatch this, and then, these and for these I am going to use my printables which have a page that looks like this so you can add the brand the name and the pigment details on your swatch these are available as part of my watercolor workbook class or as a separate printable in my shop if you don't want to enroll in the class that's totally cool so I also made them available uh, for people who just want the printables and here is an example of how you can use them. So in this case, these are actually pan paints. And so um, I, don't, I don't want to paint them in tube form. So we can do this. Uh, of course, you can use my stamp sets. I am going to do a small restock of the newer sets, the Sketchbook Essentials and the Prismatic Watercolors in the beginning of April. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray them lightly. And the reason I'm not spraying everywhere is because it is a metal tin and it will, I don't want to encourage it um, rusting. I am going to use a different brush because this one is just a little too big for the swatches. So that's the reason, but I will try to play with it as much as I can. So I have here this lovely Tintoretto Sintetico Vallo, Vajo, not sure. It's an Italian brand. This is the number four. The series is 1337. And let's start. So, sorry that this is a little bit in the dark. So, we'll start with buff titanium. I love buff titanium, and it's one of those colors that I feel um, most brands get, get it right. I'll zoom you in. So Aquarius is definitely a great uh, affordable option. And if you like, you know, to work with full pans, then um, it's a brand definitely worth checking out. Next, we have Hansa Yellow Medium. Oh, the pigment here is PW6 and then one. Here it's PY74. 
So I don't have any data on the light fastness of these uh, paints, but probably uh, you can get that on the website. Oh, this is a beautiful quinacridone gold. It's a mixture of two pigments, PY150 and PO48, and it's lovely. Transparent, beautiful. Pyrrole Scarlet, very intense orangey red, which I like. I That's as red as I like to go in my palettes. I then usually just switch to pink. This is with PR255, 255. Next we have Pyrrol Rubin. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing, mispronouncing anything. Uh, this is already kind of more of a bluish red. It's a nice color, beautifully intense, PR264, 264. It's not the color that I use a lot, just personal preference. Next one is lovely, a beautiful pink. This says quinacridone red, PV19, and it's a lovely pink. I'm all about the pink. Okay, next we have ultramarine intense. That sounds interesting. I love French ultramarine. It's my go-to blue. This is the same pigment, PB29, like all the ultramarine blues that I know. I'm not sure what's so different about it, but we'll see. It's very intense, as you can see. Moving on to Cypress Raw Umber Deep, PBR7. This is more like a khaki brown. Nice and intense. It's not colors that I use a lot. I'm not so much into the earth tones. This is Indian Red PR101, a classic pigment. Super intense, opaque. Use this with caution. Blue Ridge Burnt Sienna PBR7. Looks like a nice burnt sienna and a go-to gray is burnt sienna with, oh, sorry, that was, I'm sorry. Hopefully you can see everything. Cypress raw umber, Indian red, blue ridge burnt sienna. Next we have goatite. Now this is interesting because I do like Daniel Smith's goatite. Don't like the price tag on that one, especially in Europe where we have to pay, you know, shipping, import, customs, all those things. So it's always nice to find alternatives, more local. Poland is, you know, in the European Union. So for me, it's a much better option. Look how intense that Indian red is. It's quite, you have to be careful with that color. Next we have Thalo Green Blue Shade. This is PG7. Very common color. Then we have Thalo Blue Green Shade. Another classic. If you like super intense, staining, transparent colors, the Thalos are your friends. And then last but not least, just have to wash all that intense thalo. We have cobalt cerulean blue. And it's PB36. And you can see this is more like, I prefer this kind of um, blue. The thalo is super intense. I'll tell you what I think about this palette. I think all the colors are very creamy, intense, like I am used to when it comes to the Aquarius paints. So it's really, you know, it delivers everything that I expect from the brand. This is a incredibly versatile palette. You can mix so much from this and I actually like the fact that they don't have a gray here because you can mix beautiful grays with these colors. Before I show you some of the mixing uh, possibilities with that palette, I'm going to swatch the rest of the colors that I have. 
So you can see here how I would suggest to use this type of page in the printables. Uh, if you have those from the course or if you just got the printables or if you can make your own version of, of course. So here we have dark ochre, nice kind of earthy color. Then we have a uh, quin yellow. It's actually not quinacridone. It's a different word that is equally complicated, but I can't remember it. Um, very kind of a vibrant lemony yellow. Then we have quinacridone gold hue, which is a nice one. It looks from kind of like first look, it looks very similar to the real quinacridone gold version from Aquarius. This is kind of a, a much discussed color with different pigments and yeah, so the hue has a different pigment. Then we have chrome orange, which is, as you can see, it's like a semi-opaque, uh, very intense creamy orange. Next is, what are you, red ginger, red ruby. This kind of reminds me of vermilion, but um, I think it's a different pigment, so, you know, non-toxic and such. Uh, if memory serves, I think vermilion is one of those, like, old school uh, pigments that uh, some brands are trying to phase out. Then we have Blue Ridge Raw Sienna, which is the same Raw Sienna that comes in the previous set. Next we have Manganese Brown, this really kind of chocolatey brown. And then we have this Iron Chrome Brown, which is also, it's almost, almost has like that pinkish, purplish, no, maybe like a pinkish hue to it. Uh, so I can tolerate it. I don't, I really don't like kind of yellowy browns. Those are not my favorites. Next we have Shadow Gray. This is a mixture of a few pigments and it kind of has those uh, moon glow vibes to it. Uh, after that we have Cobalt Green Deep. If you're interested in trying some cobalts, then Aquarius is a really good choice because uh, cobalts tend to be expensive and the Aquarius versions with the full pans are very, very affordable. So you might want to try that before you commit to like a larger tube uh, from a different brand that is more expensive. Uh, after that, there's Quinacridone Purple, classic, very see-through, vibrant, uh, transparent, I mean, purple. Quinacridone Scarlet, again, transparent and intense. And the last one is Perline Red. So now I'm just going to show you some mixes from the mixing set. So let's start with a classic, which is Ultramarine. So this is the intense Ultramarine. And let's add. Come on. Okay. I'm to see the fairy go on a collar shop with a mushroom. Eh, אני רק בודקת את הצבעים האלה שקיבלתי. אם את לא רוצה, את צריכה לראות על היד שלי ועל הלבן, אז זה רק קרם. אבל פה זה היה קצת גרצי, גרצי כזה. היי קרם, ובקבוק זה עכשיו המילים בברש הכי מצחיק. מצחיק? כן. קרם ובקבוק. זה מצחיק. מצחיק אותך? וזה מצחיק. כן. זה גם. זה מצחיק? זה מצחיק! אני אומרת שהצבע מאלה... זה הכי יפה, אימא, תראי, זה, 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 אימא, אותם שלוש, 
את זה עוד, עם את זה עוד, את זה ואת זה. Okay, so I'm switching to narrating over the original audio because this just went on for some time and <laughs> Lily was saying which colors she likes from the other ones. And yeah, I, I wanted, I mean, that's lovely and cute and everything. And I hope you enjoyed the minute and a half or two minutes that you got. But uh, we're here to talk about watercolors. And I just wanted you to, to see how the... Um, Uh, intense ultramarine and the burnt sienna create really lovely grays so when you have colors that absolutely neutralize each other you will usually get some sort of brown or gray that you can't tell which colors were used to mix it like you can't see kind of the original colors so uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna are like a classic go-to example that you will see many many artists use and you know many Um, classes show that. Next I wanted to show you, I love mixing uh, complementary colors or almost complementary colors. These are colors that are opposite the color wheel, uh, opposite on the color wheel because it's just, I find it's just more interesting and kind of a little bit more unexpected. Whereas, you know, if I'm going to mix pink and yellow, I know I'm going to get shades of orange so it's it's just a bit more predictable of course that's also always good to know and check but especially on these videos I just like to show you the um, uh, kind of more surprising mixes so here I mixed that pink color with which one is the pink the pink is quinacridone red with the phthalo green and you can see these two they don't completely neutralize each other because both of them have a bit of blue so we're only going to be able to come down to like some sort of like a bluish gray but you can see that middle mix is quite neutral it just has like a touch of blue i would say in it or maybe even like a bit of a green that quinacridone red is mostly just mostly you know pink or magenta with a touch of blue i would say so there's not a ton of blue there and the phthalo green is a mixture of yellow and blue Um, yeah, so, you know, in theory, we should be able to get some sort of like a neutral color because we have all three primary there. There is that cute hand. Okay, next we have cobalt cerulean blue mixed with, um, I didn't see which one I took. So it's either the, we'll see in a second, probably when I add the next color. I guess it was the pyrrole rubin, I'm guessing. But yeah, I like that uh, Cobalt Cerulean and Ultramarine because I feel they're like a little bit more natural blues that are still vibrant, still bright, but they also granulate. So it's just my personal preference. You might enjoy the Thalo blues. Those are super popular. A lot of people love them. Uh, so it's kind of your call. But here is an example of a mixture that is a bit more predictable. But I do like to see, you know, when you mix kind of a pinkish red with a blue, you know what you're going to get. But um, it's nice to check the mixtures, especially if you have colors that are granulating, then it's always nice to see what kind of effect that granulation gives. Okay, we are mixing now the Pyrrole Scarlet with, I don't know with what, oh, with Phthalo Blue. So this will, this is... This will give us kind of intense colors. And yeah, as I said, this is just not my personal choices. If you want, I've talked about this in the past, and if you are interested in trying out uh, Aquarius or you want like a good set that is also very versatile, but also has some really fun colors from Aquarius that don't necessarily come in sets, then they have this beautiful palette inspired or like curated by an, I want to say an Italian artist that have a, that has a lovely name. 
and I will link that below. That would be my pick from this brand for a 24 set, but they also have a new Jane Blundell set of, I think also 24 colors, and that one is uh, incredibly versatile. But I think it just comes to personal taste. The incredibly versatile sets for me are unnecessary because there are colors that I don't like and never use. And so I don't need them in my palette. But if you're starting out, it's probably a good idea to use something very versatile. So Aquarius has some great choices uh, with uh, a nice price tag that won't break your bank and will give you enough paint to last you for years. So a word about this mixture. I actually like the slightly neutralized red colors. Those are my favorite. These blues don't really do anything for me. Thalo is, the thalos are not granulating and I really like granulating blues. <laughs> so <laughs> I usually go in a different direction, but you can see here uh, what you get, how these colors pretty much neutralize each other. Like I would say that second mix from the top you know, one is this kind of cooler, more earthy, brownish color. And then the next one is, I would say it's it's kind of a neutral color. So um, yeah, that's, that's a nice one. Okay, so here I wanted to just play around with actually with three primary colors since this palette doesn't have any purples in it. So I mixed my own purple and you can see how kind of easy it is to create mixtures also with three colors. All these paints mix beautifully. There is nothing, um, I, I can't fault them for anything. It's just this particular palette, as I said, very versatile, not my personal choice for colors. Uh, look how beautifully these kind of these colors that I'm using here, uh, how they neutralize each other. You can really explore all kinds of neutral colors. Uh, once you start adding even a third color to the mix, you want to just play with the ratios of those primary colors. And I like actually the semi-muted colors, but yeah, there's a ton you can do here. So I hope this helped you. Uh, a bit and inspired you to play with your paints, swatch them, mix them, and see what they can do. I will be back with another video very soon, playing some more in my sketchbook. I have some new printables that are almost ready, and those will be focused on mixing paint. Uh, with the first printables that I released last week, we were mostly swatching and now we're going to mix. So stay tuned for that and have a wonderful day. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.